Thank you very much. Can I use this microphone to, to go to? Okay, um, thank you very much for joining me here today. I'm very happy to be back on site with this presentation. Um, I could introduce myself, but I think the only really know, thing that you should know is that we are a small company of surveyors and engineers. So whatever you will see, we usually use it firsthand. And well, for all those that do not know exactly what SMASH or what the history is, I would like to give you a small, tiny history lesson about what came before SMASH. So, once upon a time, there was a FOSS night, and it was called Geo Paparazzi. It was a digital field mapping night. And at that time, it was fighting all alone against the pure evil that was giving a huge weight on the shoulders of the surveyors. And those poor surveyors had to team up in mobility groups if they had to do long surveys. Because this whole stuff you had to wear, if some of you has been a surveyor back in that days, it was really heavy. And they were put in danger many, many times. And sometimes they were put in really bad danger. So it was important to find something extremely simple to use. And Gio Paparazzi was bringing it, and it attracted the realm of different, uh, yeah, of the interest of realms in different places of the world. So we got in contact with uh, FAO, with the Research Center for uh, State University of New York, and also with Osaka Disaster Management. So there have been uh, applications and customizations of Gio Paparazzi over the time. But the evil spell came because an evil witch threw a, oops, somebody, <laughs> an, an evil witch, a terrible witch threw a spell and there were two things that we could not, after 10 years of activity of Gio Paparazzi, we could not overcome. The first one was the name, Gio Paparazzi. What were they telling me? How could you choose such a name? In certain countries, Gio Paparazzi is like on the same level like Goblin or Troll or something like that. And the second one, I figured that half the world is using iOS. I didn't know that, but there was no iOS version. And so the complaint was, how do I do with my iPhone and with my iPad? So the round table sat together and we decided in a long time to produce something that would fix that spell. And we produced a new cross-platform version. But it was very important that the cross-platform was covering iOS, but then we had a problem of the name. So what should we do with the name? And we figured, with a good marketing lesson, that you, to attract users, you have to at least put a buzzword in. You know, buzzword like smart or digital twin, stuff like that, you know? And it should make people happy. And so finally, we came with the smart mobile app for surveyors happiness. And now we are around for a while, and I think it's, it over through, uh, Geo Paparazzi went in end of life because we have way more features in Smash now than in Geo Paparazzi. And for those who don't know it, it's, it starts off with a map, and you can just start working with it. Uh, you can record tracks, points. You can edit uh, um, databases, vector databases, load background data, and mostly, very important for us, it was you should be able to work offline. Because I don't know where you live, but where I live, in the woods, and we have a good coverage in the woods, for some reason, there is never internet. I have no idea. But taking notes, who knows Joe Paparazzi, it was similar, but here you can do something more. You can, as usual, put the node in the GPS or in the center location of the map, or, uh, but you can also add icons and do uh, a little bit of customization. I think icons, which many times are just some uh, decoration, in some situations can be extremely strategic. And we chose an icon set, it's called the material design icon set, which is thousands of icons. And you can, that little tiny screen where you have the icons, you have 20 proposed for when you survey, but you can in the settings choose 
which ones you want to see on that screen. And I think that's quite okay. You can do complex surveys, uh, which means forms, and those forms are based on a, uh, on a text file that you can put together and then load inside. And if you install Smash, you should just try to create one map, uh, one uh, form, which is the examples. Examples, you open it up, and it will show you everything that you can do. And if you take the file from the device, you will know exactly what has to go in where. But it won't be necessary to do it by hand. I will later show you a couple of tools. Um, this one is more for pleasure, I think, because I added it. It's an, uh, when you're logging, uh, sometimes it's important to know for how much you've been logging, how long you've been going, uh, what's the, the, the level, and so this little chart that is very nice. Fact is that when I came here, my phone broke, and they gave me a very old replacement phone, and the first time I opened up Smash to go to the conference, this little white screen was like the whole screen. I was like, okay. So if somebody will complain about that, I promise you I will make it switch on, switch off possible. Uh, you have the possibility to analyze a little bit your log. So if you went for a survey, you can check uh, the heights uh, where, where, your, where you were at the middle, what your profile was, kind of some information about where you've been. What I find very useful, you can, your log that you were tracking, you can also apply a, a color team based on the elevation, the speed, the accuracy, and the slope, which is not bad. If you were going downside, maybe you don't see it very well, but it's a stroked line, and if you go upwards, it's a, a solid line. And then you have the color table to see which parts of your survey had which characteristics. Kalman filter, I've seen before, and I've talked to community members that were talking about um, like averaging the GPS position. I have to admit, I've preferred, uh, maybe at some point we will do that also, but I've preferred Kalman filter. Kalman filter is something that changed my life because in certain situations, the GPS just goes mad. And you have now the possibility in the settings to enable or disable Kalman filter. Both informations are saved. So you have, get a raw GPS data, but also the filtered ones. And this is a case, uh, it's a part where there are two tunnels uh, near where I live, and this is without filter, and that one is, I mean, we are not inventing the data inside the tunnel, but it doesn't get met. It, it gets a really, I think, a really good result. So you might want to check that out. Uh, country lines, if you're surveying in the mountains, that's extremely useful, and that is something uh, the background maps come do from the Map for Maps Forge project. And there is another project that makes particular customizations of these Maps Forge maps. It's called OpenAndro. And this also supplies uh, contour lines. And now you can also visualize them inside Smash. Okay, what kind of data are supported? Vector data, uh, we have GeoPackage, which I suggest you to use as your main source of data. We have also the possibility to connect to, to a PostGIS database, but it's a direct connection. So use that only if you are in a covered, network covered environment. Uh, and these two databases are in read and write mode, which means you can edit both geometries and attribute tables. Then we have also GPX and shapefiles. These are enabled uh, by choice only in read mode, but I find it extremely, extremely useful to be able to load them because many times we get data in shapefile format or GPX when you have to go somewhere. All the vector data can be styled in SLD. SLD would be the, the, the OGC standard for styling. QGIS, you can also export in QGIS uh, uh, the SLD style and load it there. I will show you later how to do that with GeoPackage. The projections, the supported projections are those from EPSG. You can load your data. If the data, the projection is not recognized, then you will get that message. Please tap here and it will guide you to download the definitions of the projection from the internet. Once you've downloaded that, you get, you have in your little cache uh, the, the projections you can use and everything is reprojected on the fly 
and also editing can be done, reprojected on the fly. Editing geometries, uh, who you, for those who use Geopaparazzi, we had something very simplified. Uh, we were using, you were drawing a polygon, if you wanted to make a hole, you had to draw another polygon and cut it away. Uh, now the tablets are really also the phones, everything gets larger, and we decided to follow a more GIS approach, so you have your vertexes, your handles, and you can add a vertex, remove a vertex, and do stuff like that. Uh, regarding the alphanumeric fields, you have two choices. If you just start like that, you open it up, and you get a table where you can click inside and just change the values. If you do something more particular, you can use the same form mechanism that we use for the notes, for collecting notes. So inside GeoPackage or PostGIS, you can put your forms, and then every time you edit the attribute table of a geometry, you will get that form presented. Raster data, uh, well, MB tiles is more or less available everywhere. We have also GeoPackage tiles, and I didn't think that that would get in back in AUGE like this, but GeoTIFFs and images with world file definitions. Uh, I'm, probably I should feel ashamed a little bit, but I found it extremely useful to be able to just load GeoTIFFs and images in there. Mind just one thing, the images get reprojected, but only by uh, warping the bounding box. So you don't get a real reprojection of the, of the thing. So if the data sets are in a particular projection against the Mercator or, or uh, uh, Latlong, WGS84, then the data might get a bit shifted or distorted. Okay, what do we do when we want to survey in team? we are going to centralize them in what was called Geopaparazzi Service Server, and we are keeping this as the GSS. It's also a free and open source project. You can find it in the web on GitHub, and you can install it in the cloud, and surveyors can just register to that uh, cloud and uh, synchronize their data. I can almost assure you that it's really easy because we had uh, a school of, in Italy uh, that so not a, a university, where all the classes, they installed the server themselves even, and they sent out all the classes to do surveys, and they were quite successful. So it should be quite easy to, to put also in a, in a little environment to set up this thing. So what happens? Uh, you have the server side, and the coordinator can go up there and can upload base maps they need to use in the field, or projects even, Geopaparazzi projects, which the compatibility with Smash is 100%. They're using the same data format. And you can use uh, upload forms, which is whatever buttons you will find with your tags, with your forms that you are going to survey. Then on the other side, on Smash, you just do an import from GSS, you put in your server, and you can either download the data or uh, download the, the, the project or the forms. They will be placed in the right place to just start surveying. One thing that I really love a lot is the versioning. So on the server, if you send up your data and then give your device or even your project to, to another of your colleagues that continues your work on its own, his own device, it will upload the same node, maybe changed, so there is a versioning based on the position. If a node is exactly in the same position, it's assumed to be the same node in another version. So when you look on the server, you get the node which has the same exact representation as on Smash, also on the web. But on the lower part, you get like a play button and you can browse back and forth to see how that particular node evolved over time. For all this, you will need supporting tools. For those of you that do services, you know uh, a survey, surveys, you know you need to prepare your data, go out, go back, process your data, get back your data somewhere. So not everyone is using a cloud system. Uh, there is this Horta machine that we are developing and keeping always in line with Smash uh, that gives you for preparing data and re-exporting uh, re data from your device, there is a spatial toolbox. There are a couple of tools and there are workshops that explain exactly how to 
prepare the data and download the data. Thank you. Um, the other thing is related to the fact that you want to st style your data, and second, you want to use forms. Forms uh, can be quite complex, so you need a, a user interface. And everything starts from this simple database viewer. In the same project or the machine, you can launch this database viewer, you can open up PostGIS or a geo package, and then you right click on a table, and you can open up, set it in edit, uh, styling mode or form mode. When you go into style mode, it will open a window that is just dedicated to styling that table for you. And it allows simple styling, but you cannot uh, add also rules based on conditional things. So you can change the color if, uh, if there's a certain zoom level or if uh, one of the attributes re reached uh, a certain number or something like that. And it allows you also to create in one click uh, a thematic map based on unique values. The other thing is the forms editor, uh, which means same thing. You right click on the table and you say, I want to create a form. It will open up a form editor, uh, which allows you to add fields at different tabs that then are presented that way inside Smash. Okay, I'm almost done. I will finish this with contributions and external use cases. Uh, there have been uh, different organizations that got in touch and told us how they were using it. One of these is the Norwegian Institute for Nature Research, Nina, and they had a very smart person there. Uh, they were sending out like uh, a lot of surveyors and they started to tell us that the server side was not really performant. And at the beginning I said, well, we never have problems, but actually they had a lot more surveyors than we had, and so they helped us actually solve this, um, this problem. But the cool thing is, before we solved the problem, they already solved their issue. So they decided, well, it's a, not a thing of the backend, it's a thing of the user interface. So we, we want to use the backend with our own user interface. I don't know if you know Apache Superset, it's a dashboard to do extremely beautiful dashboards. It's also an open source project and they simply did their own representation of the web cloud interface. And I find this super cool. Um, another um, comp a company this time, it's called the GeoRepublic. I think you know it at least for PG routing, you should. Uh, they just uh, made a plugin for Redmine. Uh, if you don't know Redmine, it's like uh, a ticketing system, a task manager. And this plugin on Redmine and inside Smash, it now got in the official uh, release. Uh, with this, you are able to create geolocalized issues that you can send to whoever owns the Redmine instance. And I know the GeoRepublic has it placed in some municipalities. So if you're looking for a ticketing system or something to handle your workflow of probably dealing with problems in town, this might be something to look at. Uh, this is a, a more easy one we made uh, where the, the, the libraries of Smash have been used instead of Smash itself to make an application of the pilgrimage of a CZ. And it made a, a small application that would show you which places to visit and how to follow your path. Last but not least, what are we working on or hope to? Uh, I think you have seen that uh, UN uh, started to build a stack of open source applications for their missions uh, that would meet their require, uh, operational requirements. Uh, Smash is also one of those that got into that. I tell you, you should go to the presentation at the 26th where they present the use case if you're interested in it. And one thing that will come is that the UN needs enterprise authentication, and that's very cool because they will sponsor Azure authentication for the combo Smash and GSS. Last slide, I promise, but maybe the most important, was I already at two or only five? Zero. Okay, I'm out of time. This would have been the most important. Uh, I, I can, thank you. 
No, uh, this year has been a bit uh, tough because we were working on, on a lot of other stuff. So Smash has gone a bit in maintenance mode, just box fixing and doing, preparing new release. Uh, now the region of Piemont, an Italian region uh, that was already using Smash, uh, started to use Smash with, uh, with, uh, with the GSS server and they, they are paying us for that. And this is extremely important because it's the first time that the, the server will get into an environment with a lot of, uh, with a lot of surveys and a big use case. And I'm sure this will uh, raise the bar of the quality of the server side. That is all for me. I'll leave you with a couple of links and thank you very much for being here today.